Hi, this is Ron McKinney with Potted F Photo with our latest webinar. We're here with Emily Bruner uh, from the Philly suburbs. Uh, we're going to be talking about DIY marketing, and and uh, and I want to be sure I note that this is, you know, there's going to be actually a, a very little focus on social media um, because we want to talk about the whole scope of marketing, and social media is just one part of it. So we're going to open with Emily. Can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey about how you got to where you are today? Yes, Ron, thank you so much for having me here today. I love our Potida community, I really do. And I'm so happy to be here um, talking about marketing of dance photography. Um, I've been in business since 2016 and I'm a dance mom. I was a dance mom before, long before I became a dance photographer. And really that's what got me into this business. I wanted to have beautiful photos of my dancers. And I thought, what better way to do it than learn how to do it myself. I did that and uh, really started my, my business by simply sharing some of my own personal photos I took with my kids' dance school. Um, so that was kind of my very first marketing step that I ever did. And I wasn't even totally aware that I was doing it. Um, so I, I shared those photos with the school and they were excited about them and, and asked me if I could do some work for them. And really that's, that's how it all got started. That sounds interesting. It's exactly the same start that I did too. You know, I just sat in on a, uh, on a recital and my kids were done. So I just kept taking pictures and then I gave the pictures to them and that's how you get started. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think a lot of us probably have a, a similar story. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So just, just a little bit of house cleaning before we get started. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat box. And if you notice the chat uh, default says hosts and panelists, but we want you to change that to everyone. So when you post a question, everyone can see it. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to get to uh, everyone's uh questions today and and uh and get them answered so um from there i'm going to turn things back over to emily and and uh we can go ahead and get started all right great all right so i'm going to share my screen here and get started all right so marketing is um, a really big, important part of our business for those of us that do businesses or for anybody who's even considering the idea of it. Um, marketing, I, I have really strong views about what I think marketing is. Um, and I wanna start out talking a little bit about that and then getting into some ideas, some things that, that we can do with our marketing specifically. So this is do-it-yourself marketing. I know that most of us um, are very small businesses. Some of us, like me, are, it's just you. You're like a solopreneur. So when we have a business like that, we have to do everything ourselves, um, including the marketing. So that's the angle that I'm coming from today, do-it-yourself marketing. These are things that you can do yourself. And a lot of them are, are very low cost, very low financial cost, even though there might be um, a hefty time investment to put into them. So what is marketing? In my opinion, marketing is letting people know that you exist. It's letting those people know how you can solve their problem and also letting them know that they can trust you. So I think about marketing from that kind of perspective. And I, I, I think that's so important because, uh, you know, to begin with, when we first get started, you know, we may know about the dance schools, but very few of them actually will know about us. And we have to figure out how to get our name and our work out in front of them. Um, so all those things are, are, are so critical. Yep, it's totally true. Like a dance school cannot hire us if they don't know we exist. So we have to make sure that they know we exist. Um, and dance schools and dance teachers and companies, they, they need our help, they need our services. And it's really almost doing them a disservice if we don't put our name out there. If we don't let them know we exist, then, then we in no way are able to help them with the things they actually need help with. Right. And, and the so, trust process to me is also very important because, you know, like they need to, it's it, like the, the photos, I think, are a very important part of, of what they offer as a dance school. And 
you know, if they don't, a lot of times they don't know us very well, maybe they just know us by reputation or then they see our work and they're very impressed by that, but they need to know that they can count on us and, um, and, 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 and that the, we'll be there for them the whole time. So, yes. Yeah. A hundred percent for sure. Um, and, and thinking about marketing this way makes, makes us realize that marketing is for our clients. It's, it's for our future clients. Um, it's much more about them than it is about us. So what isn't marketing? Um, marketing is not us bragging, even, even though like we are all doing a great job and we care so much about this. The, the marketing is not us shining a light on ourselves. So I think, I think these are like hangups. These are reasons people are nervous to do marketing because they feel like, oh, like it feels cringy like for me to say, look how great I am. Right. But that's not what marketing is. It's not, it's not us bragging about ourselves. Um, it's also not us trying to take money from people. Um, the people who hire us, like they need what we have to offer. Otherwise they wouldn't be choosing to hire us. So I don't want anybody to think about marketing as this like sleazy way to try to like get every dollar that you possibly can. Um, it's really not about that. Um, and marketing is also not for the people who don't need us. So the world's a big place, right? There's a lot of people in the world. And, um, and, and we're very lucky that we serve a very niche kind of group. Um, we serve dancers and dance schools and people affiliated with the dance community. So our marketing is not for everyone else. <laughs> it's for the people who need what we do. Yeah, you, you know, it's really kind of interesting because this is the part where a lot of photographers who are artists struggle with because they don't want to brag about themselves. They don't want to think of themselves as, oh, I want to come and make you give me money, you know, um, and, and that's part of what they struggle with. But what we're up against is, you know, like uh, maybe maybe yearbook companies who are very good at marketing, you know, and and maybe like talk about how good they are or whatever. Um, and and so it's, it's really necessary for us to step up because the last thing is, do they need us. They, they need us as dance photographers taking their recital portraits over people who, you know, aren't really aware of how to how to work with dancers, how to be sure that dancers are safe. And, and th these are things that we do know. And so it's really important for us to be there. So we need to step up on these parts right here. Yes, yes, absolutely. And, and I'm sure that, that a lot of us have had experiences where we've um, worked with a dancer or a dance school and and the school or the dancer or the families they're so appreciative that that we're coming from the dance focus with our photography because they've had experiences you know where they've worked with a photographer who didn't know about dance and didn't even know to consider dance as you know um, a technique and an art so they they appreciate that expertise that, that we bring um, and, and our marketing is, is showing them that they can trust us in that. So when we're thinking about ideas for marketing, um, there's some kind of like principles and ideas that we should keep in the back of our mind as we figure out what we're actually going to do, um, how we're actually going to uh, market ourselves and our company to serve the people that need us. So there's some things that, that we want to think about. Um, we want to think about who is our client. And even here within our really specific group, we serve different types of clients. So some of us work exclusively with dance schools. Some of us work exclusively with um, individual dancers. Um, some of us do a mix, some work with professional companies. So we need to think about who our client is. And that's the person or the group that we are marketing to. We want to think about um, what they specifically need. Um, so we don't want to we don't want to think about this from our perspective. We want to think about it from their perspective. What do they need? What are their problems? And and how can we help them solve those problems? Um, then we want to think about how how can we find those people so that they can know that we exist. So where are where are they? Like physically, where are they? Um, where where are they online? Um, and what kind of places are they going to be laying their eyes that they can meet us and, and see our work? Um, and then we really, really, really want to think about how we can help them. It's really all about that. It's about how we're serving them and how we can help them. 
So thinking about it from their perspective, what they need, where they're at, and how we can help them is, is um, how we want to approach all of these techniques and strategies we're going to talk about. Yeah, that's a great idea, because I think a lot of times we just think of it from our perspective, but it helps understand it better from theirs. Yeah, definitely. Um, so another thing that, that I think is really super important as solopreneurs or small business owners is, is don't try to do it all. Um, there's so many great ways that we can do marketing, um, but, but, our, but we're a bit limited in our resources, um, especially with our time. You know, we all have 24 hours in a day. We're sleeping through some of those hours. Uh, we, so we, we really can't do it all. Uh, plus, we need to be taking the photos, talking to clients, um, you know, getting prints made, all kinds of things. Um, so it's really important that, that we consider what we have the capacity to do, what we have time to work on. Um, we don't want to necessarily choose our strategies based on what we are able to do, because we're all talented, smart people. And, and we could eventually um, learn how to do all these different things. We have the knowledge and the ability to do it, but, but do we have the capacity within our day? Do we have the capacity considering all of our other responsibilities to do these strategies? Um, the other thing is we want to really choose something that we'll actually do. Uh, these marketing strategies often require a commitment so that we are working on them over a fairly long period of time. You know, it's not, it's not like we just, um, you know, hit a button to publish an ad on Google and then it's all set. It's not like that. These, these strategies require some time and commitment. So we want to choose something that we will actually do. So I think it's a good idea to choose something that, that you're kind of excited about. Choose something that sounds like, like fun to you because we can be creative um, through our marketing. We can have fun with it. It doesn't have to be a chore. So I think a great strategy here is to really get really good at one thing and then add another strategy. So start with one, start with one strategy. We're gonna go through several here and you can pick one that suits you and, and your desires and your business and your, your time and availability. And after you've got something going, so that it's kind of a well-oiled machine, then you can add another strategy. Um, another thing to think about, a lot of marketing is content driven these days, you know, where we're putting out social media posts, newsletters, we're, we're writing things, we're using the photos that we've taken. Um, it's, an, it's really helpful to think about repurposing all of that. We don't need to uh, create a gazillion different things. Um, we can create one thing, we can, we can write one blog post and use, use that in several other ways. From one blog post, for example, we could um, use the same copywriting in our email newsletter. We could take little bits and pieces of it and turn it into 10 different social media posts. Um, there's, there's all sorts of ways that we can repurpose our content. So we, we don't need to keep reinventing um, the same thing over and over again. We can just use what we've created and, and make it really work hard for us. And another thing that I'm a big, big fan of is knowing when to hire someone to do something for you. Um, it's, um, we're lucky that we live in this great big world where there's lots of experts out there. And if we don't have the time to devote to something, we can hire somebody to help us or to do it for us. So that is something to keep in mind as a solopreneur that even though we're trying to do it all ourselves, sometimes we can't. Yeah, we're so used to doing everything that it, it just doesn't make sense. And some things we need to hand off, which will allow us to actually do more. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, and I think I already talked a little bit about this, but we want to give, give it time, whatever we're working on, whatever strategy we're trying to use here with our marketing, we really have to commit some time to it and give it time to work. Um, you know, there's no quick instant thing we can do here to, to get like a gazillion clients um, on board. We, we need to give it time. It takes time for people to learn about us. It, it especially takes time for people to, to uh, for us to gain their trust, for them to trust us, you know, and to see our expertise. So we really need to allow for that and, and be patient for it. 
And remember, once again, it is all about people who need us. Everything we're doing here is to serve people who need us. All right, so I have nine marketing strategies um, here to share with you. Um, I actually have 11 because I kept thinking of new ideas that I, I wanted to share with y'all. And I, but I'd already made this like little screen here for the presentation and I didn't want to change it. So um, nine marketing strategies with two bonus ones at the end. I love it. <laughs> All right, the first one I want to talk a little bit about is an email newsletter. Uh, this is one that, that I have... Um, had a lot of success with, and I think is a great idea. Um, it's super affordable. I, I, I'm sure that some of you have newsletters going already, but with a, a, a program, a vendor like MailChimp, you can really get a lot of use out of it for, for no cost at all, no financial cost. They have a free plan that um, is pretty generous in the number of subscribers that you can, can use there. And for anybody getting started with an email newsletter, it's, um, it's great, it, it works really, really well. Um, one super great thing about a newsletter is you own it. You own your, your email list. Um, we do not own our social media accounts. And I know we, we all have friends who have unfortunately lost some of their social media accounts for no, like, no obvious reason, you know, like these companies are huge and they've got these these like algorithms and things that will just shut down an account and there's nothing we can do about it so our our email list um of names like we own that nobody's going to take that away from us so this is a really safe way um to to have control over who we're communicating with and, and the beauty of these things we, we use mailer light and and uh, the beauty of these things is they're a program that helps you put the newsletters together. You know, you, you, you know, they have like here's your, you're gonna write some you know, some text or something, and then you're gonna put some pictures in here, and so it's it's actually really easy to put these newsletters together. And then using a program like this, it allows um, the people receiving the emails to unsubscribe, which is really actually very important. Um, and and you know, Mailer Light, and I'm sure um, yours does it as well. Totally controls that for us. So. If somebody unsubscribes, I don't do anything. They, they they just unsubscribe them and take care of that for us. But it's just a fabulous program. And it also allows you to see, um, you know, how many people are opening it and how many people are clicking on the links, which I think is really helpful. Yeah, it really is. Um, there's a lot of great services out there to help us with this. And, and talking about subscribers, um, you know, we like we want to be careful that, that we're getting subscribers in an ethical way. Um, we're making sure that the people who are signing up for our email list are actually wanting to be on there, you know, and they're choosing and opting in to be on the email list. Um, you know, we can get we can get subscribers from our past clients. We can we can um, offer our uh, offer our mailing list up like when people are are buying um, photos of a volume job that we do. We could we could invite them to join our email list at that point when they when they make a purchase. Um, there's lots of opportunities for us to invite people to be on our list. So um, being aware of that and thinking about how can how can I invite people and, and just making sure that, that it is their option, that you're not just signing somebody up um, without their permission to be on the list. And and you can send out email. Like, newsletter, you can send it out once a week, once a month, every day. It's really up to you. You want to pick something that you have the capacity to do, something that works for you and your schedule. Um, even if people aren't opening your, your newsletter, they're seeing it in the, the inbox. You know, So if they see your, your name popping up there once a month, um, that's 12 more times a year they're going to think of you than if you didn't have the email newsletter. Like even if they're not opening it up, they'll see your name, you know, pop up there in, in the inbox. Uh, so it's it's valuable even for the situations in which people aren't opening them. And, and everybody is not going to open the newsletter. Um, you know, maybe 30% will open it. Um, so, so the goal there is to really get in front of people so that they're reminded that we exist. And it gives us a great opportunity to just use our own voice to share our thoughts, to share our work, to share our personality with, with um, our audience. 
so we can really write about whatever we want. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't, every newsletter doesn't have to be about, look what I did with my work. It can be, it can be whatever moves you, whatever you feel like helps, helps the people reading the newsletter. And we do have our first question on here. It's from Martha Worth. Uh, She's asking, uh, do you still need to invite past clients to the list or can you just add them and then allow them to unsubscribe? It's best to invite them. And there's all kinds of different ways that you can do that. You know, you can, you can ask them, um, you can send them an email, you can make it make like an opt-in kind of like a, um, a part of, of a contract. Um, I think to be completely, you know, like according to the rules, you need them to opt in in some, in some way. Um, with our email newsletters, we, we really want to take the opportunity to entertain the people reading it, you know, so if we have something fun to share with them, we can do that. We want to use it as an opportunity to educate them, um, either educate them about photography, dance photography, what we do for them, things they can do to help their lives. Uh, we can use it to inspire them. Some, some, some of my email posts, um, my email newsletters are, are really have nothing to do with photography. It's just sort of like, like a thought that I had about seizing the day, you know, or, or something like that. Um, you know, and then I find some little way to work in a photo, but, but inspiring them with, with whatever's at the top of, of your mind, if you feel like it helps them, then it's something good to write about. Um, and we can also use our newsletter to persuade people, you know, that, that, that we're here to help to persuade them that hiring us is a good choice. Um, it gives us a great opportunity to do all of that using our own personality and our own voice. Word of mouth is another great way of marketing. I think a lot of people don't think of, of word of mouth as, as marketing. Like when we think of marketing, we think of social media, we think of paid ads, you know, things like that. But word of mouth is huge. It really is. And I'm sure this is a big, a big thing for all of us, even if we haven't quite realized it yet. Um, we can put out really great work. You know, the, the good work we do for people is, is like the first step in getting some good word of mouth marketing going on for us. Um, asking for, for Google reviews. This is a big thing that I do. After, after I've delivered my clients um, their photos and I know that they're happy with the work and, and everything's come you know, at the end, I asked them if they would be willing to write a review for me on Google My Business. Um, people are not gonna leave reviews really if you don't, if you don't ask. And maybe one in, in 200 might, might leave a review. Um, so you really do have to ask and make it easy for them by giving them the link to click. Uh, say, you know, would you, would you be willing to leave me a review? It, I find it, um, it really helps future clients um, find me, you know, when they do Google searches. Um, I, I, I ask my clients to just write a very short, simple review by clicking, you know, click here and you can leave a, leave a review. Um, and I've found that when I ask people, well, about half of them say, yes, I would love to. And then about half of them actually get around to writing the review. Right. I think, I think <laughs> and, providing that link is a real key to that though, in yeah. terms of getting them to do it, make it as easy as possible. Yeah. Yep. And, um, you know, and if, if you use um, like Google Maps, um, you know, if like if you've probably done this, like going to look for other businesses, you know, you, you're looking for a pizza place nearby and you search on Google and it shows up on maps. If you have your business on Google set up to, um, to show up on the maps there, having, having those reviews, you know, it, it really sets you apart. So that's word of mouth. People trust those reviews when they see that you are a photographer who has 50 reviews that are all like five star reviews from 50 different people they're they're going to they're going to trust you those reviews are are using um, a form of word of mouth advertising for you versus a photographer who doesn't have any reviews you know like it's the same thing when you go to rent like a a VRBO um, or like Airbnb you you're going to kind of probably be let more hesitant to go for the rental with, that has no reviews versus the one that has 20 so um, asking for Google reviews, I think is a really easy, it's so easy, it takes like a second, um, really easy thing you can do to, to help your marketing. Um, and you can also incentivize referrals. I've never done this, but I know a lot of people do. 
where there's uh, like a little referral program for past clients. If they refer you to another friend and that friend books you, then, then you give the client something in return as a thank you. Um, I, know, I know people have done that. So that's something to consider as well. All right, my, oh, there we go. Okay, it was frozen for a second. Um, oh, search engine optimization. Okay, uh, do y'all know what that is? Uh, I, I, I did not at all until I was a year or so into my business wondering why, why, why is nobody finding my website? Like I created this website and <laughs> nobody's finding me there. Um, it's, this is like complicated and this is something that I realized quickly I don't, I don't have the expertise or time to figure it out. This is something I hire somebody to do. But getting your website optimized for searches um, is important. Google needs to see keywords in your copywriting. It needs to see backlinks to other trustable websites. It, it needs to see new content coming on your website. It needs all these things for Google to decide, yeah, this website is worth showing when somebody Googles dance photography. Um, so I have hired people in the past to sort of audit my, my website and, and get it polished up and set up to optimize the search engine optimization. Um, I think this is something that's really important, super, super important. If you have the time and the expertise to learn how to do it yourself, great. Um, but if you don't, then there's lots of people out there who, uh, who you can hire to help you with it. And, and they can be really good at like setting up, you know, your keywords and backlinks and all that. Um, you know, just, I think the one place where they try to uh, get some more money out of you where it's really unnecessary is when they talk about having a monthly fee after that, because what they're really talking about is doing new content. You know, there's not a whole lot of updating to do with the key keywords and backlinks. Maybe you can do it once a year or something like that. But, you know, I just want to uh, make sure people are aware of that. Um, Brian Balloon has a question. And uh, I'm not sure if you're really like how much you know about this, Emily, with, the, with how Google works with WordPress. But he says, do you really need WordPress? And uh, what if you use another platform for your website? Yeah, um, so I don't know for sure. Um, I do not use WordPress. I use Squarespace. I started my business, I started with Weebly, which was like an inexpensive, um, I didn't use the free version, but I used like the almost free version. And, and, uh, and that's when people were not finding my website. And I started to like try to figure out why is no one finding my website? And I learned through, um, through some just, you know, reading articles or Facebook groups that, that Weebly was not so great for search engine optimization on the websites, but people were recommending Squarespace and WordPress sites um, saying that you can do so much more with the SEO, with the search engine optimization there. So at that point, I'm like, I'm switching to Squarespace and I switched to Squarespace because it's really pretty user-friendly. It was something I, I could design myself or whereas like WordPress, I couldn't wrap my head around how that worked and I, I still can't. Right. So um, I don't think you have to use WordPress. I get a lot a lot of my leads come from people feeding me through searches and, and I use Squarespace. I, I, we use Squarespace as well for the Ron McKinney photography website. And I think it's actually in line with WordPress. So in other words, it gives you the same benefits that uh, WordPress does, you know, in, in today's world, I think uh, all these new platforms understand, you know, the importance of being seen in Google. So I think they're, uh, they're um, um, right in line with, providing all, all those benefits. Um, yeah. Ronald Lee is asking, uh, can you write a blog, you know, displaying the, the latest post first in Squarespace now or still can't? And uh, my understanding is I can control um, what blog is up there just by, you know, deciding, you know, putting down what the date is on the blog. Cause you know, like the way we have it set up is the most recent post goes up there. Is, is that uh what your experience is as well, Emily? Yeah, I do the same way. I have it so it's it's chronological with the most recent at the top. And and I do think you can put whatever date you want, you know, on each post. It doesn't have to be the date that, you know, I don't think it has to be the date you actually that it, you actually like wrote it, you know, or posted it. So right. um yeah, that that's how I do it, just chronological. 
Yeah. And for me, I use my, whatever I put in my, my email newsletter, that's what's my next blog post. <laughs> so oh, that's how cool. I'm repurposing my content. <laughs> right. Right. Doubling up on it. Love it. Yeah. All right. Volunteering. This is one that I love. Um, volunteering gives us such a great opportunity to really, you know, like get into our community, um, to, to serve others, to get to know other people and to do it in a way that, that helps other people know that we're here for them, that we exist. Um, there's lots of different ways you can do it. There's some things that, that I've done. Um, you can do event photography, you volunteer, you know, to photograph some kind of charitable event or something like that. But, but when you give the photos out um, to the attendees, um, use your branded photo gallery, when, you know, whatever it is you use for your business. Um, I've done this for my kids' sports teams where I take photos at their swim meet. Um, you know, I've done it like volunteering for, for causes that, that I care about. Um, there's, lot, there's so many opportunities for things like this. Um, you can offer your services as an auction item for galas. Um, if, if there's a dance school or a dance company in your area that does some kind of gala where they have a silent auction, see if you can offer um, a session as one of, one of the items that they're, they're auctioning off. Um, you, could, you can sponsor things. I've, I've actually never really sponsored anything, but um, you know, like the little league baseball teams, they, they have like the sponsors' names on the backs of their t-shirts. Um, there's all there's all kinds of organizations local to us that that need our support and, and would be welcome welcome us to, uh, to to be a sponsor. I know a lot of like we do a lot of races around here where, where you can be a sponsor. So there's all kinds of opportunities. Um, you really just just want to find find things that are that are genuinely meaningful to you. Things that that you're happy to volunteer for. You don't want it to become a chore. You know, we're limited in our time. So you wanna be selective about how you do this, but you find something that's meaningful to you. Find some ways to, to give to them. Um, and and it, it'll it come back to you. It'll definitely come back to you with, with new relationships and new business. Absolutely. Okay, podcasting. This might be one that, 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 that you haven't ever thought about. And I've sort of figured this out and learned about it through my business networks that have nothing to do with, with dance photography, seeing what some other um, industries do. But podcasting is a really great way to, um, to get your name out there. You can do it in a way where you are hosting your own podcast, you know, where you're producing a podcast. It can be about your dance photography. It can be about your local community. It could be about just photography or just about dance or, or something else. Um, but if you have your own podcast, you are creating content, you're, you're getting it out there for people to listen to, you're able to invite guests to be on your podcast. And when you invite a guest to join you, they're going to share that, that podcast episode with their audience, you know, so then, then all of their people, all of their friends and family and clients now know about you. So you can do it from that perspective, or you can try to be a guest on other people's podcasts, where then you get exposed to their audience. So podcasts about photography, podcasts about dance, local podcasts, all of these um, exist and podcasting is, has like taken off so far in the last uh, several years. I know like when I started my business, I didn't even know what a podcast was, but, um, but they're, they're a big deal and there's a lot of them and a lot of great opportunity there. I think a lot of people like to listen to podcasts while they're driving, you know, instead of listening to music or oh, yeah. whatever it was or news or whatever, they've, they've begun to listen to podcasts and it's really interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right, social media, I have to put this in there because it is, it is a big part of marketing, right? Um, and, and I know, especially as dance photographers, this is something that we all, um, we probably are all already incorporating this into our marketing. Um, so you know what the social media platforms are with Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Whatever you choose to do, um, you want to make sure that you are being smart about it and strategic and going where your clients are. Um, so, you know, if, if none of your clients, like if you are typically um, working with 18 year olds, 20 year olds, and none of them are on Facebook, then you don't need to put a ton of time into Facebook. Um, so go where your clients are, be consistent. So show up. Um, if you, if you put a post out there and people are replying, like reply back to them, you know, like, like if you've put up a great photo and somebody 
somebody writes like a really thoughtful comment to you about it, um, I would say, don't just, don't just like it, but reply to them. You know, you've started a conversation by putting your post out there and then they've, they've like answered you. Um, and so if you don't, if you don't like answer them back, it's, it's really kind of like, like not shaking someone's hand or like, or imagine if you were in person and somebody said something to you about your, your beautiful photo and you didn't say anything back to them. Um, so I feel like with social media, it's really important to be consistent and, and engaged um, consistently with what you're doing there. Um, and to show up as yourself, you know, be yourself, show your personality, what, whatever your personality is, um, be authentic. People will see that and, and they'll be drawn to who you authentically are. And also remember to use your personal accounts too. Um, when I got started with my business, that was a big part of, of how I got started, just sharing photos there personally on my own personal Facebook account. So, so don't be afraid to, to share a little bit about, about your work, you know, or, or about your inspiration on your personal accounts. And I just want to go, before we move on from social media, just talk about, you know, you had the option to uh, uh, purchase ads through Facebook and, and Instagram. And, you know, I've done that in the past. I think there are a number of people who have been successful at it. I've never had any success at this. Um, and I think, Emily, we were talking yesterday and you mentioned that that you didn't have much luck with that either right i think um i think that doing at paid ads really doing paid ads anywhere is is something that you really need to be smart about doing um you need to either really know what you're doing or or hire someone who you trust that they know what they're doing and and be committed to it um, just putting out like one, you know, just promoting one post or, or doing like one ad on Facebook, that's, that's a waste of money. It's not going to, it's not going to get you anywhere. It needs to be like a, a strategy, a long-term strategy with some, some really strategic um, um, thoughts, you know, and, and plans for how you're going to run it. Yeah. And I really love how you said that uh, you should just be authentic and be yourself in there because, you know, if, if you're just putting putting pictures out just for the sake of putting them out or you're trying to be like somebody else it, you're just not really coming across and we're all unique and a lot of times that's why people are hiring us because of who we are not just because of the amazing photography that we can do but because of who we are and we need to be sure we express that yep it's so true you know um most people can't really tell the difference between like an, a great photograph and a good photograph um, but everybody can tell the difference between somebody who's being authentic and somebody who's being like fake or somebody who's just a bot, you know, and barely really even exists at all. Yep. Um, so it's important much. I'd say it's, it's more important than having like a perfectly composed um, photo. All right, paid advertising, which we just talked about a little bit, um, is something I'll touch on here. And it, and it is an option and it does work for some people. And there's different ways you can do it. You can, you can do ads on Google, um, you know, social media ads. Um, something unique to dance photography that I've thought about doing but haven't yet is putting ads in programs, you know, for all those dance schools with their recitals when they have the program. Um, we could think of some really creative ways to put an ad in a program. I've, I've thought about like putting something in, in a program, like the, like a joke or something where it's like, you know, how, how many dancers does it take to change a light bulb? And then they like put my, like a QR code with a link to my website and they have to scan that to get the punchline. So it would, could like direct them back to my website. Um, I haven't done it yet because I haven't had the capacity to really do it, but I think there's a lot of potential there. Um, but with all of this paid advertising, um, you wanna just be really wise with how you're spending the money because it can get expensive, especially stuff like the, the Facebook ads or Instagram and, and, and Google. Um, so, so be intentional and be wise and, and make sure that, that you have the resources to really make it work for you. Okay, partnering with local businesses. This is one that, that I love. Um, I consider every dance school that I work with to really be a partner of mine. And I think they do too. You know, we're both businesses and we're, we're helping each other out and we're supporting the same, the same cause, you know, which is basically lifting up these young student dancers and, and giving them confidence and, and, and giving them an opportunity to be a part of a, a supportive community. Um, so 
thinking about ways we can partner with our dance schools, partnering with the dance stores that we have locally. Um, if you guys have a local dance store, if you're lucky enough to have, have one, um, they can be a great, a great partner, you know, to support each other. Um, dance, local dance companies, um, theaters. So we don't have to just strictly limit ourselves to, you know, to ballet companies or dance schools. Um, a lot of, a lot of uh, community theaters incorporate dance into their productions. So dance is a part of their lives too. And also the venues at, at which performances happen. There's all kinds of different, different places than, and organizations we can partner with. And when we're partnering with them, we want to, we want to give before we ask of them, you know, if we have a way, an idea, something that we can do that helps them, we want to go to them and approach them that way saying, Hey, you know, Hey, I, I noticed this. And, and I had this idea that we could do this. It would be so great for you guys. We want to give before we ask of them. Um, and there's a photographer, she's not a dance photographer. And, and I'm sure some of you have heard of her, Megan DePiero. She's, she's this fabulous um, photographer in Florida. And, and one of her, her like mottos that she goes by is give, 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 ask. So give first and then ask from, from your business partners. And, and, you know, I think it's really like important for us to be doing like our own personal shoots. I try to do one at least every month. And, you know, like in terms of what you're talking about here with partnering, th these are things that you, what you can do is when you want to do a personal shoot, figure out a way to partner with the dance store and, you know, do something with them, but especially our dance schools um, who we are, um, you know, trying to keep as clients, you know, you know, I'm doing a, a, a really cool shoot next month in Chicago. And, uh, and so when one of my dance schools was in here for a recital portrait, you know, I talked to the owner and I said, Hey, I want to use one of your, your dancers for this, this, this shot. And I kind of described it and they got really excited. And, and, and so now they feel like they're a part of it. And, and it just bonds that relationship when you do things like that. That is such a good point. Yep. We have so many opportunity, you know, so much opportunity there to do things like that. Great point. Um, okay. So these are my bone, th those were my nine things. And these are my bonus ideas. Um, checking in on old clients, which Ron just gave a perfect example there of finding some authentic ways to stay in touch with our past clients. If you think about a client, you know, if, if they pop into your head for whatever reason, let them know, you know, if you saw something that made you think of them, let them know. If you have an idea, something you want to work with them on, let them know. Um, just being genuinely engaged with them on social media when, when they have, um, when your dance school or one of your past clients has something fabulous happening in their life, um, make a comment about it, you know, congratulate them. Um, you want to keep them in mind. So, so um, you want, you, you want to keep them in mind so that they also keep us in mind. We want to have genuine relationships with, with our past clients and just the way that you would with a family member or a friend. If you think of them, you know, you reach out to them and you let them know. So the important thing here, I think, though, is being genuine about it. You don't want to like have a, a list of all your clients and like, okay, today I'm going to be, like, you know, <laughs> hi, Sally. I was thinking of you today. How's it going? Like that? I don't know. That's just like seems fake, right? You need you need something like genuine. You need like if you actually thought of her because you like her fit. You know, you remembered that that she told you her favorite movie was um, you know Footloose, and you're like, oh, I'm watching Footloose here today, thinking of you. So just making sure it's genuine um, goes a long way to, to having genuine friendships and relationships with, with our past clients. And my, my last idea here um, is just good old fashioned talking with people. Our marketing doesn't all have to be high tech, you know, SEO and Google ads and things like that. Talking with people is a way of marketing. So if there's a school that you wanna work with, reach out to them, pick up the phone and call them and, and let them know that you, you, know, you wanna work with them. Um, I've done that in the past and sometimes they say, no, sorry, it's not gonna work out. And other times they're like, oh, that would be great. Um, truly, you know, picking up the phone to call and to ask like, hey, you know, can I help you guys with this? Can I, I notice that, that you have a, a really great performance coming up. I would love to, to photograph it, you know, to give you guys some marketing photos and, 
and some photos for your, your families. Um, you can also just talk about what you do with your friends when you're out. Um, I know like we all hang out with other people, right? And we're all so excited about what we do. Like we love dance photography. And is there anything else like, like that we would love to talk about more than dance photography? So um, it's, it's okay to talk about what you love and what you do with your friends. Um, you know, let them know and, and they'll see your enthusiasm and it'll be contagious. And, and then when their neighbor is looking for, for dance portraits, they're gonna think of you. Um, and another thing that I really love to do is when I'm doing photos of a dance school, like of their, their dress rehearsal, I take the time in between when I'm shooting to talk to the families, to talk to the dancers and the parents and teachers and to genuinely become friends with them. Um, that, has, that has gotten me work in other ways. So, you know, you're, you're talking with a family at the, the rehearsal and, they, and they're like, oh, do you do, do, you do family portraits too, which, which I do. And, and then I'm like, oh yes, I do. And, and that has led to, to other jobs. So just talking, being, being a human, you know, and, and finding those connections with people in real life is a great way of marketing. No, I totally agree. Uh, if anybody has any final questions, you know, now's the time to put them down. Uh, Mark Steelman has a question for you, Emily. He's asking if you have any success with any like portrait campaigns, like, like uh, saying, okay, enter this to win a portrait session or whatever, uh, discounts on sessions, anything like that. Have you ever tried that? Um, I have not tried like, like, like um, sort of like giveaways like that. I have tried sort of mini sessions, you know, where I offer discounts and I've had no success with that, to be honest. Um, and I haven't figured out why. I've, I've tried it twice, so I don't have a giant sample size, but I have never been able to, to like get enough momentum. Um, I've never been able to get, get enough people signed up for, for special things like that, special events that, that I plan where where it's been worth it. Uh, the kind of exception to that is if I partner with a dance school and the mini sessions are specifically for the dancers at that school. Um, when I've done things like that, it has been really successful. And though, you know, those are like a discounted rate to what I would do for, for like a one-on-one -on -one session. But um, for my business and the way that, that I work with individuals, I have not had success in, in offering specials or discounts. And I'll just go ahead and add in that um, th this past, you know, fall, early winter, I decided, why don't I do a Black Friday special? And, and, and so I sent it out on, on my newsletter and I offered a Black Friday special and I tend to make my money on the back end, not on the front end with, with the session fee. And so what I told everybody is that I would waive the session fee and, uh, you, you know, and you had a book by a certain date and there were certain dates that I offered these, you know, which were the dates that I knew would otherwise be slow for me. And uh, it actually worked out pretty well for me this year. So I plan to uh, ramp that up a little bit more this year. That's great. That's great to hear. Um, yeah. So, you know, if you have the capacity to the time uh, to try something like that, then it's, it's worth trying because, you know, you, you've got to figure out what works for you and your business and what doesn't. And so sometimes that means trying something as I had tried with the, the many sessions I, I tried to do. And sometimes it doesn't work, but now you know, like, you know, that, that just isn't for me. Um, or you try it and it does work as it did for you, Ron. And then it gives you the knowledge like, hey, this is something I can, I can do from time to time. And I'm actually applying one of your marketing strategies. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We, we have another question here from Larry Sachs and he's talking about, um, that uh he's from south jersey and uh he he says uh oh wait a minute oh, that that was very we moved along he said that uh he finds that some schools have several photographers offering images which i don't really find too much of and and um he says how do you separate yourself out to become their preferred photographer so um i don't i don't feel any need at all to be ex exclude like if if my school wants to do something else with another photographer, like that's fine. You know, my, my feelings are only hurt a tiny bit. Like I'm not devastated and I'm not like, oh, you guys really like, you should really just hire me. I do have, I have a school 
and um, a very loyal school where I do their performance photos. I take photos of their Nutcracker, their um, and their their like recital, you know, the performance stage photos. And one of their teachers does more of like the mini session kind of recital portrait things. Um, a couple like a month before their recital. So two different photographers, two totally different, you know, products and types of photos, and it works fine. Like he is successful with what he does with the school and I'm successful with what I do with the school. Um, so I'm really like, to me, that's not a problem. Um, I aim to focus on what I do. I aim to really like give them awesome photos and to give them even better um, customer and client service so that they have no reason to not ask me to come back. <laughs> awesome. We've got the questions coming in now. So Sarge Augustine has, is saying, uh, have you done any referral programs with current clients? I have not done referral programs with current clients. Um, to me, it just seemed like it was, for me, it was something that would just be a little too hard to track. Um, with my individual clients, I'm really low like a boutique kind of situation, like low, low volume, um, high touch. So for me, it just didn't feel like it would be worth it to, to even try it. But I know, I know other people do it and have had success with it. So it's definitely something to consider and see if it could work for you. Okay. Let's see. Um, I think I have another question here. Um, well, we just had uh, Ronald Lee, you know, making a comment um, about um, mini sessions and talking about how they're they're popular in the city and they're. But for some people, they they basically undercharge and provide too many, and I, I I think that's one that's like mini sessions that more beginning photographers do, and you know, any of you guys who are beginning photographers and are offering a lot of images for a little bit of money. You know, I just encourage you to try to get away from that as soon as you can, you know, offer many sessions. Yes. But, you know, like, like when you say, OK, it's going to be uh, $60 and you're going to get 40 images, you know, you're going to you're, you're not going to get much sleep. Um, yeah. So um, let's see. Yep. OK, so so I think that's it so far in our questions. Great. Yeah. I just, I wanted to wrap up um, to say that with marketing, with like true genuine marketing with good and like the right intentions and the right strategies, everybody wins. Like we win because we get to find our clients um, to bring us business, to support our families. Our clients win because they get their problems solved by experts, us, um, who, who they can trust. So with our marketing, we are aiming to help people to know, to find out that, that we can solve their problems and to show them how, how they can trust us. And a lot of these marketing strategies um, will either expose people to us or establish our expertise, which is a big important part of earning people's trust, um, or they demonstrate how we're solving problems for them. So those are our goals with marketing. And when we do that, everybody wins. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for being a part of this, Emily. It's uh, pretty exciting to to uh, learn a little bit more about marketing and like like generate some new ideas. And the important thing now is to um, is to actually think about these things. And remember what Emily said in the very beginning: don't try and take this all at once and try and do all eleven things. Just focus on one that you know would really work well for you and try that, and then move on to another one. Does that that sound good, Emily? Yes. Yeah. I would love for, yeah, for everybody to really just think of like, what's the, what would be my favorite thing? Um, or what would be like the, the most uh, productive thing that I could do from these ideas that I'm not already doing? Um, and then figure out if it's something that you can implement, you know, if you have the time to do it and the resources and then go for it. Just, you know, pick one. Don't, don't do them all. There's no reason to do them all right now. Pick one, get good at it, and then move on to something else. Okay, and then we'll have one more question. I know it's Brian Balloon had asked this in an email to me earlier, but I'll go ahead and, and, and put it out there. It's, it's kind of a different question. It's not really a marketing question. It's really more of a pricing question. And that is, is there a particular price point range that works for most dance moms? And I, I think Emily's a great person to answer this because 
you know, she's not, you know, like a low cost dance photographer. She actually has very good pricing. Um, the beauty of having higher pricing is you can always offer a discount for some people if you ever want to. But the bottom line is, you know, what the price point is, you know, it really, it's, it's really going to be driven by, you know, what your business model is, you know, are you going to be, um, I remember during the conference, we did a, a, uh, a session on, on pricing and, um, and, you know, one of the things that was mentioned in there is, do you want to be a, a high volume photographer who costs less and does a lot of work? Or do you want to be a low volume photographer who charges more, you know, and, you know, then you really get more out of it and you're able to give more to your clients that way. Um, you know, that's kind of the way I look at that. What, what are your thoughts on that, Emily? So um, I have kind of strong thoughts about that kind of question. I kind of think it's the wrong question. I think that when you were talking about business, we have to first truly ask like, what do we need to charge so we are a sustainable business so that we're covering our costs and paying ourselves a fair a fair amount i think that's more important than what what the the market's perception of a good price is because like we can all go out and shoot dance photography for free but if we're going to do it as a business you know and take on the liability that's involved there take on the extra work with like bookkeeping and marketing and all this other stuff, then, then we need to be paying ourselves fairly and covering our costs. You know, it, it's just like, it wouldn't be fair for us to essentially be working for free um, when we could go get another job that pays us better and take free dance photographies completely on, on our own terms. So I, I think the real question is um, not what's the price point that works for most dance moms, but it should be what's the price point that works to keep our business profitable. Um, I, I really believe that. I think first and foremost, you have to make sure you're charging enough that, that it's okay, okay for you. Um, so I know that's not, not the answer that, that he probably wanted to, that, uh, that Brian probably wanted to hear. But, it, but to answer Brian's specific question, just like with anything in the world, there's some people who won't pay more than $5 for a photo. And there are other people who will like pay $500 for a photo. I, I was doing photography of a, a theater performance. Um, and one of the moms like told me about her son. He, you know, he was like eight years old. He was one of just like the little kids in the front, like with everybody else, like not, not like a, a role of his own. She's like, oh, could you please get a photo of him? You know, it would really mean a lot to me. I was selling these photos um, to all the families. And, and, and I got one. Um, actually, it was my intern who got one. She got this, this great photo of this little boy. And the mom came to me and she's like, she's like, that photo means the world to me to have that photo of him. Um, she said, I, I would, I would pay a hundred dollars for that photo. You know, it was, so it just goes to show like people are going to pay whatever, whatever they value. And some people don't value photography and other people value it a lot. So this is why I think it's important to charge what works for you. Not, not what's best for the, the average dance mom. Okay, and so now along that line, we have a, one more question from Larry Sachs, and it's a very good question because it does come up sometimes, and that's sometimes we take over a school that had a photographer that was not charging as much as that's, that's really fair to the industry, to us, and so how do we deal with that? Um, is there a good way to introduce a higher price to the studio how, how do you have any idea about how they can go about that? I'm always completely honest with the, the dance school, you know, so that's who that's kind of who's like approving me or hiring me. So I give, you know, I give them my pricing and and I ask them, like, you know, do you think that this is pricing that will work for your school? And I kind of leave it up to them. Um, I they know, they know their school best. And, and a lot of times I've had them say things like, you know, like that's okay because we, we, re, we all realized that the person who was doing the photos before was, was like a, a hobbyist or, you know, um, they, can, they can see a difference. They can see a difference in the quality of the photo. And they can also see a difference um, even more so in, in the quality of service. You know, the fact that, that I'll have their photos ready for them, you know, a day later versus five weeks later. 
Um, so I'm just completely honest with the pricing up front. I tell them this is what it's going to be. And I, I let the school decide if they think that's going to be too big of a jump for, for their students. And if it is, that's okay. I, but I can't afford to take that a job. I can't afford to like reduce my rates because then there, that means I won't be able to take on another school at that same time that would have paid my rates. Yeah. Um, Tracy Brennan <laughs> put in commissions yes or no. And I think what she's saying, what she's asking is, um, is do you, you know, is, is it okay to do kickbacks to, uh, to dance schools? And, you know, to be honest, when I first started, you know, I, I, I did that because that's what the norm was back then. And, um, you know, now that I'm a little bit, a lot more established, I, I don't do that. I do offer them free marketing shoots. Um, but, you know, I, I just don't do kickbacks. What, what, what are your thoughts on that, Emily? And that doesn't mean that my answer is the right answer for everybody. You know, that's just, you know, the way that I go about that. Yeah. Um, so if a school asks about that, I will let them know that we can run it as a fundraiser, in which case I, um, the way this works for me is like it, basically for the schools where we, we're doing like kind of mini sessions, like each, each student's paying for a five minute session. And I'll tell the school, we can run it as a fundraiser and I can add $5, $10, whatever you want. I can add that to the session fee and, and then you'll get that. But it's too, I, I don't like increase, I'm not gonna give them a portion of my profits. That's not, that's not gonna work. Um, and I'm not, I'm also not gonna like increase my pricing and give them a percentage because that starts to get complicated. Like, do we include sales tax in calculating the percentage? Do we take out the cost of goods, you know? So the only way that I will do it as a fundraiser is if there's a set, like a small session fee the client the students are paying, and I can just add on whatever the school wants. Um, but I do I also I don't I don't offer that unless they ask, but I will offer like I let them you know I'm giving them the the purchased photos or the the group photos that we're taking, or I'll offer to do headshots of the teachers and the staff you know at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. So there's a lot of ways that we can add value um, to the school. And I think it's important we do that, especially um, since they really are like, you know, hooking us up with that, all that revenue and that job. And they're often providing us with um, a lot of support, um, the building to use, um, you know, the electricity, the water, um, the teachers who, who might be there on hand, helping us with the hands-on posing of the dancers, um, showing up early to let us get into the building and set up, you know, there's a lot that the school is doing to help us. So I do want, I do think it's nice to support the school and help them, but it doesn't have to be um, a commission or a kickback. Right. Um, just one more comment. Hey, keep coming, Emily, <laughs> which I love. Um, um, Tracy Brennan says, okay, frame group collage and, uh, you know, giving back to the dance school. And I do that for about uh, a third of my dance schools and I don't charge them for that. Um, thoughts on that with you? Yeah, I think I, regardless of what it is we're giving them, you know, um, it just needs to work financially. Um, if, if, the, if this was a school where, you know, I had like $10,000 of revenue, like I'm happy to, to give them, um, you know, a $300 framed print. That's, that's fine. Um, so it really, it's, it really depends. And I have found that all my schools are a little bit different from one another in terms of size and how many kids buy and, and what the school needs and wants. So it's, I think like, this is the beauty of having your own business, right? You can decide what works for you and what, what works for your, your schools. And, and um, there's just so many different ways we can support them. So if your school wants a, a framed group collage and, and the money, like you can do that, you know, you have enough, um, enough profits there to do that, then great, do it for them, sure. I don't think there's, yeah, like there's no reason, there's no principle that says, no, we shouldn't give them that. Okay, awesome. Well, I think that's it for today then. Uh, I wanna thank you so much, uh, Emily. Any final words before I sign off with us? You just wanna say I'm goodbye excited. Here? Yeah, I'm excited to, to uh, I would love to hear, you know, if, if people start an, an email newsletter or um, if they find some kind of like volunteer opportunity with a local cause or, or they partner up with their local dance store, I'd love to hear about it, so. I'm excited to see what everybody what everybody does. 
Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for doing this and sharing, you know, your, your wealth of knowledge and your experiences with us. Um, and thanks again, everybody, for being a part of this. Uh, we will be, uh, if anyone asks, we will, this will be recorded and put on our education page. Uh, also a reminder for those of you who are still on here, we are having our Zoom photographer call tomorrow at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Uh, just check for the information in the Facebook page. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you guys next time.